Welcome to Cancer and Peace. My name is Sean Stewart, and I'm here with our host, Peter Scalzo, on his 19-year cancer journey. And we're going to talk about wisdom today as part of our journey, and wisdom as something that you don't necessarily try to put the two together. But I think the argument that um, we're going to at least put forward today is that the cancer journey is a journey towards wisdom. Mm -hmm. And in wisdom, there's a lot of peace. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk about examples, and there's a lot of different characteristics that are there. And I think the thing that just stuck out to me um, was when we were talking about this with the producer Jack prior to mm. uh, kicking off today, we were talking about this concept that was in uh, James, that James talks about, um, you know, somebody who was pulled to and fro with all the things going on in their life, that they're an unstable person mm -hmm. and they lack wisdom is one of the things that's, uh, and, and so we want to talk about that a bit because I think uh, your cancer journey has been an experience of being pulled to and fro. And part of what kicked mm -hmm. this off was, and I think I'll kick off with you today is you're being pulled a lot of different directions today in your own journey. You know, mm -hmm. we, we uh, kicked up our recording today, not that anybody listened to this, it'll still be released the same day, but because you have a procedure tomorrow yeah. and you have yeah. one the next week and yeah. you have a lot going on Yeah, and there's a lot being pulled on your life. And so yeah. maybe just first thinking about feeling all the pulls and the things that are happening just so, because part of producer Jack's question, which I thought was a great one is like, how do you interpret being pulled all these directions? How do you look down the road yeah. and not be unstable, not be right. thrown around? Right. You know, I think I'm just going to start out on a different foundation right now to answer that. Um, and I'm just going to go back to our, beloved James 1, 2 through 4 verses, which say, consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you have these trials. And it basically goes through this list and says, because you're going to be have proven char character. And proven character, I believe, is really a greater intimacy with Jesus, maturity, all that kind of stuff. And right after those verses, it says, and he who lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, let him or her ask of God, and it will be granted to him. So, I think a lot of times when, uh, at least for me, when I'm going through the trials that I'm, go I'm going through within this cancer space, it's, it's God, give me, give me wisdom. I I'm asking for wisdom. Um, and wisdom, it, you know, and I, I know we're going to talk about what wit wisdom is, but um, I, th I think there's a practical aspect to wisdom besides the uh, spiritual aspect. But uh, wisdom for me has been... Uh, settling on on who my team's going to be my team of healing what treatment I'm, I'm going to have how i'm going to live my life am i going to make changes with diet exercise all those things uh, and i think you know the cancer diagnosis brought that as a paramount issue in my life to think about that and it is a minefield I will just say that as a cancer patient, because there are many voices out there, some medical, some non-medical friends and relatives and people who mean well, mm -hmm. and then you add the faith community, they all mean well. But um, it, I would say I, over my cancer journey, I've, I probably have had 50 different ways, I was going to say to leave a lover, that, but... That's a song. <laughs> Fifty different ways to uh, you are old to how and <laughs> how to tackle this cancer diagnosis. And you know, as a cancer patient, you're like, oh my gosh, I I, I need to weed through, yes, discard some stuff, grab some stuff, but get to a place where I have peace in the journey that I'm going to take. Yeah, we've yeah. we've talked about this quite a bit in the past in different ways, but I think just taking this straight on is understanding that because you have so many yeah. things that are being thrown at you as the way or yeah. as the answer, yeah. um, it's a journey of wisdom. So I'll ask the rhetorical question. So um, you asked for wisdom and then it, did God give you a cancer journey? And that sounds really harsh in one sense, yeah. but uh, because um, by having a cancer journey, he's really grown you in wisdom. And then yeah. in the midst of that, you've had to ask, for so much more. Yeah. Um, 
I'm curious because uh, you you put a different a few different communities out there. You and I yeah. both run in uh, Christian um, circles, so to speak, mm-hmm. whether it's recovery or in church circles. And one of the things I thought was interesting, you talked about the story um, of somebody who was well known who was an apologist. Uh, yeah, talk about that a little bit because this and is Bill a crash. This, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's yeah he he. Back when I had my end of life diagnosis back in 2017, at the same time, he's an apologetist with Ravi Zachariah Ministry, and he was a, a young man, 32 years old, with a with a young daughter, and he was given one year. He had, was given a diagnosis of a stomach cancer with with one year, and um, I don't think intellectually anyone knows more about the scriptures than than him. I mean, he, at the age of seven, he could recite the Quran. You know, he grew up Muslim, writing, seeking Allah, find, finding Jesus. So just a brilliant mind. And I mean, you know, they they went around to college campuses and universities debating. I mean, I that would scare me. But for him, it was like a natu- young man, brilliant mind, knew everything and, and in that space. And um, and so then he gets di- diagnosed with this, with this di- uh, disease, cancer of the stomach, and goes through the, the medical part of the journey, mm-hmm. and it's it's almost as scripted as what the doctors say. And at the end of one year, he is facing an end of life uh, journey. Um, but before he did that, he he went and tried out some some faith healing. He went to a to a church that is is well known that teaches about um you know finding healing through your faith in christ praying over them and anointing with oil all all that stuff and so he he went and 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 tried that and he was told he was going to be healed yeah yeah and that didn't turn out the way he was told right right yeah and i I mean i've had experience with that also so yeah well and uh, in, do you want to describe space. your experience with your mom just out of is that yeah i mean uh she had a tough diagnosis uh ovarian terminal cancer and and uh we had gone to one of the prominent faith healers and and both of us went forward and and even a piece of her clothing was given to the to the faith healer and and he basically prayed and pronounced she would be healed within a certain time period and um but it was like one of those we she was already on on in in the medical space which i was too but we were going because you know here was this faith healer and my dad had encouraged her to go and and some other folks and you know we went forward saying okay lord whatever you you have in store and um it didn't come true it didn't come true yes I think this fits in because I went, you know, going back, mm-hmm. uh, you can see how easily it is to be tossed to and fro. Yeah, totally. If somebody has an answer. And as yeah, you I mean, start looking for an answer, and one of the things that you've done in such a good job, which I think this is a piece of wisdom I want to really hone in on, is you're not after 19 years so easily tossed to and fro. No. Uh, when somebody comes with the silver bullet, right? Um, you don't put it into the chamber and see if you can shoot it. You're like, huh? I mean, I've, I've, um, I've seen cancer patients go to Europe. I've seen cancer patients go down to Mexico. I've seen cancer patients do alternative therapies. Um, and I've watched people get off, uh, what a major medical cancer center would prescribe and try alternative therapies. And, and, um, I, I've watched people f- die. I mean, I've just watched people pass. It was, uh, I don't know if you've seen Groundhog Day, but. Yeah. So every day, you know, Bill Murray has to live each yeah. day. Every, and there's this old man that he tries to save. And no matter what he does, the old man dies. Yeah. Right. And it's it's sort of like that. It's like, you know, God is the one in charge of our passing. He has it written, the Psalm said that it's in a book recorded. And I think you can do all kinds of things to, to try to thwart that, but God's plan will not be thwarted. And uh, that's, so that's one position. And then on the other side, this is the, this is the tension. Am I not going to research? 
because that's that's the other side being a good steward and being responsible for my health yeah i want to get back to that however i do want to highlight something that yeah. nobody else is going to know is that but i'll reveal it anyway is that you're a movie guy you love yeah. uh, great movies I rarely watch a movie. So for you and I to actually have watched a movie <laughs> that I could actually say, yes, I know that one yeah. is something that's new for us. So we could talk about Groundhog Day for a while <laughs> if you like, because we have a shared experience yeah. in the movies that rarely happens. So. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful. Good. Yeah. I, d- I do like the movie. It was actually, yeah, it was fascinating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to go uh, just take a little bit of a turn because I think we're going to come back and talk about those tensions in a little bit. Yeah. But the turn comes from, uh, we were looking at James 3.17, and it says, but wisdom from above is first of all pure. Mm -hmm. That's the start of 3.17. And and that just strikes me as, why does it say first of all pure? Yeah. And so as I just, in just a few moments, thought about your cancer journey, Yeah. the first thing I think you might talk about in that, and, I, and it just strikes me this story that goes back to um, your big surgery and you had your arm stretched out mm-hmm. in the form of a cross and you heard God tell you, I'm going to remove the cancer, um, mm-hmm. but I'm going to remove the cancer from your heart. Right. Um, and you're like, what does that mean? Uh, and that might be, I might've missed the quote a little bit. But no, this no, that's idea, pretty good. Yeah. Um, and that sticks out to me that it ties with this, uh, that wisdom from above is first of all pure, Mm -hmm. because I think your cancer journey has been a journey that we've now in this podcast over and over tied it to your recovery journey. Mm -hmm. And your recovery journey is a journey that's moving you towards a form of purity. It's like a, of cleansing of taking ownership for who you Mm -hmm. are, your, character defects, the things that have been moving you in the wrong direction in life, Mm -hmm. and it's moved you towards purity. Any thoughts or comments as I say that to you? Because we didn't talk about this ahead of time, and so I'm curious how you relate to that. I know, and I'll just be quick with this, but I think pure when when I think of purity, I think of something that has no pollution in it, a stain. And um, I, of course, am a sinful man. And, And so... Tell me. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Everyone doesn't want to know the sins that I that I commit. But um, I think that that that's the beauty of our higher power, Jesus Christ, and my faith in Him is that I take on His purity. In other words, the work that He's done for me on the cross, I'm going to surrender and submit and give my life to Him, and then. To a certain degree, even though I'm a sinner, uh, he he can fill me and do special things within my within my life, and you know cleanse me of that sin. But um, and so I no, take on his his purity. That's awesome. So you're really uh, what you've learned in this is that you actually have to rely on purity yes, that's outside total, of yourself. Total. Yeah. And then there's peace in that. Yeah. Total. That's pretty cool. Um, and there's also been though. And so I want to put both of them on there because there's a level of, um, I think that's right. That's the, the journey as a Christian journey. We have to trust in Christ's righteousness, his purity, not our mm-hmm. own. Mm-hmm. And inside of you, though, there's been something that has developed that um, has been also a form of purity in that uh, you also have grown in taking accountability, making amends for mm-hmm. harm that you've done. These are recovery journey concepts. So yeah. inside of that, there is... It's not just, oh, I take on Christ's righteousness and I can ignore my past. Right. There's been a part of your journey, too, that this yeah. has catalyzed you. Mm-hmm. Or let me just say it this way and, and see if you agree with this. The more that you get in touch with the fact that you're relying on Christ's righteousness, the more that you can be confident and free to reveal your own issues and trust in it even more. In other words, by revealing yeah. isn't, and making amends and taking ownership isn't, because now you are becoming the pure person in your power. It is Mm -hmm. a way of saying, no, this is how much I can now rely on. I can expose myself uh, because of Christ's purity and rely on his righteousness. Is that a fair way of thinking about it? Yeah, very much. And I think that, um, that part of that process is, I mean, I, you know, such wisdom from 
Jesus, but when he said, you know, don't point out the speck in your brother's eye, take out the log in your own eye first, and then you'll see clearly enough. And I think some, there's other words in that scripture passage about wisdom. We're going to get there. Okay. <laughs> but I think I think staying in our side, the, the recovery concept of I'm going to own my stuff, stay in my side of the street, I'm going to listen to people to understand, I'm not going to interrupt, I'm not going to fix people. These are all really good qualities, I think, for getting at wisdom. Yeah, so uh, I'll go back to this mm-hmm. 317, but wisdom from above is, first of all, pure. And so your mm-hmm. your description is, I'm relying on Christ right, for, that. Um, for mm-hmm. that. And so, and it fits into producer Jack's question is, how do you look at all the chaos mm-hmm. that's happening around you and and first you know what do i what's the story that i'm telling myself that i don't get tossed in that storm to and fro and you're saying hey i'm not relying on my own righteousness i'm relying on his that's big the next section then it says it is also peace loving so mm-hmm. first of all it's pure then it's also peace loving and i'm curious has your cancer journey changed i'm pretty sure it has because we named this podcast cancer and peace Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's something about this piece it's also peace loving that ties into how this journey of wisdom is first pure but then it's also peace loving how Mm -hmm. why is that a characteristic of wisdom and how does that tie do you think this cancer journey experience from you yeah i think for me wisdom seeks seeks out a uh, spirit of peace. And that doesn't mean there's no conflict. And that doesn't mean there are there aren't difficult choices. And I find my peace in my surrender to my higher power, Jesus Christ. So but I think that place of of having things settled with my higher power and maybe even having things settled with my fellow man and woman you know, in my heart, like letting go of, of resentments, amends, all that stuff. I think that that is loving peace. There will always be conflict and war around us and all that kind of stuff, but I think that's a peace-loving attitude. So far as it depends on you, be at peace with other pe- people is a big huh. deal. Yeah. Yeah, my experience in this journey has been, um, and mine in the recovery journey that we just talked about, was that I came in to recovery with sharp elbows. Mm. And a sharp elbows meant that, not that I loved war, but I would attack first. Um, and the reason why was that I hadn't dealt with my own insecurities. And it's my bet, and this is what I'll just ask you to confirm or think about or comment on, is that the cancer journey is an invitation to do an inward journey and resolve those insecurities is to get to a level of security about who you are, whose you are. Cause that's what I just heard you talk about is like, mm-hmm. I know whose I am and there's time for conflict. So uh, sharp elbows doesn't mean the way I described it isn't saying that conflict, conflict is a necessary part of our life, right. but sharp elbows meant that I was hurting others from a defensive posture, yeah. not from a, hey, I need to have conflict with you because there's a problem here that we need to resolve. It is, no, I feel insecure, and so I'm going to throw the first punch. I'm going to be yeah. a bully. I'm going to say harsh things or I'm going to uh, say something that is about what you're wearing or something like that to deflect attention. Right. Those are sharp elbows. Yeah. Um, but you're describing something of what I think the cancer journey does is it invites you to look at those insecurities and start addressing them. And I think that relates to your journey also is that you were starting to look at what causes those insecurities. Yeah. I mean, my issue was the opposite of yours. It was, Hey, I don't want to be in conflict with you. So I'm going to people please to the fullest extent. And that means changing what I think and who I am chameleon kind of thing. So, um, Peace loving for me was getting in touch with what I really want, uh, what I really need, but being able to communicate that in a loving and direct way. And I've worked a lot on that. Boundaries with certain people, communicating in a loving and direct way, and um, uh, not wanting to 
cause conflict, but wanting to be uh, not being afraid of it either. That's such a great piece there. And I I wanted to, I'm going to re-highlight that uh, peace loving is not conflict avoidance. Mm -hmm. And like that's uh, because then you're living in tension all the time. There's no peace where there's un, there's conflict that's unresolved. Right. And so conflict avoidance means conflict is unresolved. And what happens when that in my life is when there's unresolved conflict, it's not peaceful. I live in anxiety. Right. I am, oh, that's still out there. That's right. still out there. That still has to be resolved. Right. And so it's not a peace loving mode. So I love the fact that you raise conflict avoidance as something that, Hey, you've actually had to now be willing to step into those things so mm-hmm. that you could have peace when it seems so counterintuitive that peacemaking re- result uh, demands yeah, that you actually it's peacekeeping it. versus peacemaking. Oh, thank you. Yes, and I was a peacekeeper, unbelievably to the to the denial of myself. So you could work at the UN and be <laughs> like, oh. but peacemaking <laughs> is: Am I going to enter into? Hey, this is puzzling me, and. Let's let's discuss because other parts of wisdom are: Am I open to hearing what other people? Oh, you're trying to jump ahead on me. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to move Sean along, Jack. Uh, yeah, producer Jack is over there laughing at us right yeah. now. So, uh, <coughs> well, I want to. I'm just going in the order of the of the passage okay. here because uh, yeah. this really it kind of just stuck once as we were talking about it, and so yeah. And so you're not actually jumping ahead of me. You're jumping ahead of the passage. And mm-hmm. that seems unbiblical to me. And so <laughs> I just feel like that. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> uh, I want to address this conflict right where we're at right now. We're okay. going to be biblical here, you All and right. I. Let's be biblical. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, so we're going down in the order. And I said, first of all, that it's pure. Mm-hmm. Then it said peace loving. We've talked about that a bit. And the next item on the list is gentle at all times. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of wondering, I've seen maybe both sides of this in the cancer journey, mm-hmm. uh, people who um, are not this, but I've also seen something in you that I think is incredibly admirable is that there's a gentle spirit. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, and people sometimes uh, place gentleness as weakness in a, mm-hmm. um, you know, kind of, you know, yeah, kind of way, you know, where they had their hands are together and they're, they're afraid. Yeah. And, yeah. but this isn't the gentleness I think is speaking no. about here. Gentle at all times. Yeah. Um, what about the cancer journey has moved you towards gentleness? Wow. Well, absolutely. Um, the, the context of suffering has moved me towards gentleness. The fact that, um, that we all, struggle with suffering and I know how it feels to suffer and it hurts and can I be kind and gentle with people Um, and I'll just say for instance yesterday I had to go to the hospital and I knew they already had everything that they needed to do my procedure tomorrow but they wanted me to drive an hour to come down and I was annoyed inside I was like why can't we just do this over the phone but when I got down there, I discovered that they were going to draw blood, do EKG, do some things. And so I, I said to them, you already have them, and they're timely. Four months ago, I did an EKG. I just did blood the other day. Check your charts. This is supposed to be about you being gentle in spirit. So yeah, yeah. This is, so just checking. I said, so they, <laughs> they checked their charts, and they said, you are correct, right? Yeah. And they still spent a lot of time me asking me the same questions that they had asked me over the past two weeks, like 10 times, right? But if I sit back and say, these are well-meaning individuals within the medical space that are doing their best to do their jobs. And um, is it that much of an inconvenience for me to come down and just as a as another gesture of, hey, I'm I'm... I'm a willing patient. There is a time I signed an AMA against medical advice to leave a hospital, but that was a hmm. that was a very extreme situation. I felt like the hospitalist in charge wasn't listening to me at all. And I was gentle about it though. I just said, "Hey, I understand your your thought on this, but I disagree." And so I'm signing the AMA and I'm getting out of here. 
Um, and um, so I, I think it doesn't, it, it, it means that I'm going to resolve my tough emotions with, with God and uh, my fear, anger, sadness. I'm going to do that with the Lord. Mm. Does that mean I'm perfect? No, I bubble out anger at times and annoyance at, at times. But um, if I put myself in their shoes and they've got all these pressures of the medical community around them, then I'm going to be gentle with them. That's such a great, I'll, uh, I'm going to give the counter story yeah. for a second. And uh, just because understanding that you just said you were able to have deep empathy for their roles. Mm -hmm. And my wife's a nurse and uh, she sometimes comes home and tells me generically story about patients. Mm -hmm. And um, she told me just last week about a patient that had come in and she'd been there for two days before. And, and she had to, the lady had to come back in for something and, and they did another intake. And when you do intake, there's questions they have to ask, you know, and the lady was like, I just answered those questions two days ago. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, but there's a reason why we ask these questions so we know where you're at today. And, and, and the lady was just so rude and over the top about, um, towards my wife who really is just, she has to follow procedures and do things as a nurse that uh, for proper documentation and, and people don't recognize the pressures that are on the medical community, even legally, right. the things that have to be done. Right. And what you just described was empathy for, mm. Hey, actually this person actually isn't against me. There was right. enough wisdom to know they're actually trying to do their best mm -hmm. with their role. And there are reasons why they ask these questions and do these things. And sometimes there's reason for doing them twice. Um, right. And so that really does speak to me in a way about gentle at all times, even mm -hmm. when you think or it feels unreasonable. Yeah, yeah. And I think if you're being taken advantage of, you will know it. And there, there may be a time to speak up. Right. Um, so that's all. I mean, I th those times are rare, but you know, I was given blood and like sixteen vials worth the other day, and a woman was there, and she stormed in and she said, "I already gave sixteen vials of blood, and they're calling me in to do more blood." And I'm thinking to myself, "Well, maybe they have more tests to do. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to they're trying to help you. They're trying to cover all the bases, you, you know." But she was mad. Could be that there's <laughs> vampires back yeah. there, and they're feeding yeah. them, and they're making some money off of this. She was she was angry, and I was like, "Wow, that's you know. interesting." Yes. Yeah. Well, I think there's something, and I'm going to just because I talked about gentleness and weakness and I, and both both of us would uh would say blessed are the poor in spirit this is a, yes. a a concept that we get to but there's something that i think is a powerful concept and i think the cancer journey you know it influences this but I, i'll put this out there and I, and I experienced this um a couple of nights ago i had the grandkids for five days um the son and daughter-in-law were i took a trip at a company country. So my wife and I got to keep in. It was, it was a great time. And, and, um, in the evenings, you know, it was putting them to bed and, and, uh, you know, I'm holding this, this two year old and, and recognizing how, <coughs> sorry about that, how important it was to be gentle, mm -hmm. um, and to be able to hold a two year old with strength under control. Um, mm. and for her, like everything in my being wants her to know she's in a safe place that she can just relax and know that there's nothing to fear. There's no, that there's someone there who cares about her every need, who, mm. uh, just wants her to feel and know, um, strength under control and, and power under control mm -hmm. is love towards her. Mm -hmm. And that's gentleness. Like every action, every feeling was gentleness towards her. And to be able to sit and enjoy that is a great moment of peace. I mean, when you mm -hmm. hold your grandkid in there, just relaxing and knowing and can sense the peace in you, the strength under control, and then just mm -hmm. goes right into their body and they're able to fall asleep. And I know you have a granddaughter now mm -hmm. also, and you probably experienced some similar things. It's like mm -hmm. one of the great experiences in life of gentleness, strength under control where you're allowing, you know, I'm, you know, 10 or more times her weight and power and all that, but it's all gentleness towards her. 
and you're describing it in everyday examples of going to the doctors, you could use some power you might have out of control and you might even be able to get things done faster. You might be able to avoid a test, but it's not the point. It's strength under control says, wait a second. I see the value in them and want them to sense and know my gentleness towards them. their my value of them, my empathy with them. And I think, uh, your cancer journey has shaped you because you're one of the most gentle people I yeah, know. Yeah, it um, shaped me. I did, wasn't always that way. So I think it's, um, you know, it's been long and hard and lots of things have happened over the 19 years and I'm pretty much resolved to uh, submitting, you know, my girlfriend says all the time, how can you, how, how do you do this every day? And I think it's just, I just have to put myself in God's hands every day. I don't know if I have tomorrow. So I just have to put, and none of us do. I mean, these are great lessons, right? They are, yeah. I think this is going to go on longer. I have a, yeah. a, several more of these that I want to talk about a little bit and how yeah. this journey, the thing I think we want you know, our listeners or watchers yeah. here to hear today is that the cancer journey is an invitation to grow in wisdom mm -hmm. and that in wisdom, there's great peace that you're not being tossed around in the storm. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a storm, yeah, but you're not being tossed around. And mm -hmm. I think that's uh, what I see inside of you. And I think we wanted to do is talk more about these. We have more examples and things that are yeah. things that have come I mean, up. And um, I think producer Jack, who introduced this topic, was talking about too, like all the choices in front of us. How do we navigate as a yeah. cancer patient? How do we navigate through all that? I want to get to that. I think Look we'll probably do that road. in the in the next uh, yeah. se uh, the next podcast that we have. So, yep. but this gives you an idea of the importance of that the cancer journey can build great wisdom, and wisdom is almost always, maybe not just always. Uh, I'm not wise enough to know, but it comes from hardship. It comes mm. through hardship, it comes through the storms and mistakes, and so. Uh, cancer is not a mistake in your life, but it is a storm and it has been growing you in wisdom. And as you've become uh, in greater wisdom, there's even deeper peace. Yeah. And that's a pretty amazing thing when you start thinking about um, how important wisdom is, you know, is in your life. So, yeah. I think there's just f for, for me to kind of sum summarize it. Yeah. It's, it's really taking myself off, off the throne and putting God and other people into a different place. It's really not about me. It's about God in me and through me. But because I think down the road next week, you're going to talk about, am I willing to listen to others and respect and all, all that kind of stuff. So I'll give examples where you have, no, I'm yeah. just <laughs> no, that's no, but exactly I, right. uh, to me, you know, that's, that's what, that's a major part of it. Yeah, I'll read the last part here. And it okay. says, those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. That's mm. that's the ending part of this. And so, um, and since this is cancer and peace, you know, our goal is to see seeds of peace sown mm -hmm. in the hearts and lives of the people who listen to this podcast, who watch this, and just have a little bit of understanding that their journey is not a journey of suffering for no reason, that there's something that's being sown here that's bigger Right. and greater than that. And so that's my hope today. And we'll yeah. talk some more about this next week. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, John. Thanks, Jack. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.